In a small American rural town, David lives with his abusive father William but without his mother, who left them when he was five. At school, David likes to hang out with his crush Millie, a girl who dreams of traveling around the world. David knows about this dream and one day, he gifts Millie a snow globe with the Eiffel Tower in it. Millie loves it, but the sweet moment is interrupted by Mark, who teases David for being a dork and throws the snow globe in the middle of a frozen lake. David is determined to retrieve it, but when he walks on the ice, it's not thick enough to withstand his weight and it breaks. The frozen water takes the boy and it makes him panic to the point where he suddenly disappears from the lake, only to appear again inside a library. Confused and scared, David decides to ignore what just happened and go home. William immediately begins yelling at David for being late, so David hides in his room, locking the door. Furious, William begins pushing the door and when he's about to burst in, David disappears and shows up at the library again. Finally accepting he has superpowers, David returns home, grabs his savings, and escapes in order to start a new life. First though he stops by Millie's house to leave the snow globe so she knows he's alive and well. Next, David moves to the city, rents a dingy room at a motel, and begins testing his powers. The first few times he ends up crashing against a tree, but eventually he gets the hang out of it by looking at pictures of the places he wants to go to. His first visit is to the Empire State Building, where David has fond memories of his mother Mary. When he feels ready, David visits a bank to get an idea of what it looks like inside, and in the evening he teleports inside the vault to steal all the money. While David celebrates in his little room, the bank discovers the robbery and Roland shows up pretending to be NSA. He has experience with cases like this and knows of the existence of jumpers, in fact he's sure one of them did this. Eight years later, David is living the best life. He has a luxurious penthouse apartment in New York filled with expensive objects and such good control of his powers that he uses them just to reach the kitchen. His walls are full of pictures of landmarks that allow him to easily teleport anywhere in the world to spend the day, like having a picnic on top of the Sphinx. One evening, he shows up in London and enters a pub, here he teleports to the bar to pick up a girl. This carelessness is noticed by Griffin, but David can't tell and just leaves with the girl. Meanwhile a jumper teleports in the middle of a tropical jungle, only to get caught in a net of wires that keep tasing him and stop him from teleporting again. This trap was set up by Roland and his men, they call themselves the Paladins and hunt down jumpers because they think they're an abomination. Roland kills the boy with no hesitation, then he gets a call about their next lead. Moments later, David returns to his apartment and finds Roland there, who has brought all the notes David has left in bank vaults through the years. David tries to kick him out, but Roland responds by hitting him with a special baton that shocks him with 1000 volts of electricity that don't let David teleport further than a few feet inside the apartment. A fight ensues and after lots of struggling, David manages to teleport inside a hidden room in his wall, cutting the baton cable. Roland follows the cable and begins breaking down the wall, but David just grabs a bunch of money and teleports away. Not giving up, Roland looks at the pictures and sends his men to all of David's usual jump sites. He also looks at David's stuff and finds an old picture of Millie. Seconds later, David appears in his old room. William hears a noise from downstairs and rushes to try to meet with his son, saying he feels like he's crazy and that David is welcome anytime. David only assures William that he isn't crazy before disappearing again. The next morning, David considers visiting William for good, but he can't bring himself to talk to him. Instead he goes to Millie's house, and Millie's mother is so shocked to learn David is alive that she hugs him. She informs David that Millie is working at the local bar and David heads there, only to feel like a coward again as soon as he sees older Millie. David tries to leave without being noticed and bumps into older Mark, who immediately recognizes him and begins asking questions. His outburst is overheard by Millie, who reveals she saw David when he arrived and was waiting for him to say something. This makes Mark jealous and he tries to make a move on Millie, causing David to punch him for it. This triggers a fight that ends up outside, giving David the chance to push Mark through a fence and teleport him away while nobody is watching. They appear inside the bank vault David robbed, and David threatens Mark with worse before he jumps away, leaving Mark in the vault as punishment. Afterward David returns to the bar and finally has a chat with Millie, who dropped her dreams of traveling because she had to face the reality of having a job. David tells her he works in banking and invites her to come to Rome with him, which Millie obviously accepts. All this is overheard by Griffin, who somehow is in the bar too. Meanwhile Roland arrives at the police station pretending to be CIA and punches the detective when he isn't believed. Then he interrogates Mark, promising he does believe the crazy story about teleportation. Relieved to have found an ally, Mark tells Roland everything about David and Millie. Roland immediately calls his men to send them to Italy. A few hours later, David and Millie arrive in Rome and check in at a very luxurious hotel. Millie starts getting suspicious of David's real job, but he swears he isn't lying. The two of them end up getting frisky for a while before they finally leave the hotel and enjoy the beauty of Rome while Griffin watches them from afar. Eventually David and Millie try to enter the Colosseum, but it's already closed for the day. While Millie is distracted, David teleports inside to get a side door open and pretends he found it like that. The couple wanders around and enjoys the history behind these views, with David pulling the same trick whenever they find a locked door. 
When he tries to gain access to the lower area, he bumps into Griffin relieving himself on a pillar. David tries to ignore him, but Griffin suddenly teleports in front of him and reveals there are jumpers all over the world. Griffin scolds David for bringing a not jumper into this and carelessly jumping around because he gained the attention of the wrong people. At that moment, the paladins enter the Colosseum and start chasing the boys. David is immediately shocked with a baton and he can't move, but Griffin has more experience with these guys' tricks. He teleports away in seconds and quickly knocks them out one by one. Then he tells David about the paladin organization before disappearing. Suddenly an employee from the Colosseum shows up screaming for help, so David jumps into the jump scar left by Griffin's teleportation, allowing him to find his secret hideout in the desert. Furious, Griffin reminds him he left Millie alone and David immediately jumps back to drag Millie out of the building. Unfortunately the police are waiting outside and arrest them both. Eight hours later, the cops are still trying to interrogate David, although they can't make a formal arrest until the magistrate from the US Embassy arrives. This magistrate turns out to be Mary, who frees David from his handcuffs and tells him to run before more paladins come. David tries to go after her to demand an explanation, but a cop gets in his way, so David teleports him to Egypt as punishment. Then David returns to the station and tells Millie the cops let them go just like that. Millie doesn't believe it can be this easy, but David asks her to trust him and takes her to the airport. Not understanding why they're running if things are supposedly fine, Millie demands an explanation. David shows her all the money in his bag but doesn't give her any answers, he only tells her they can't be together anymore. Feeling betrayed, Millie flies back to her hometown alone. Meanwhile Roland's team calls him to inform him they were defeated, almost as if someone knew they were coming. Then Roland visits William, who pretends he hasn't seen his son in eight years. William also admits that even if he does see David, he won't tell the police, which Roland doesn't appreciate. Moments later, David shows up at Griffin's hideout and finds out that Griffin hunts down paladins to kill them. It turns out paladins have been doing this for centuries, and they're responsible for things like the witch trials and the Inquisition. Griffin points out that if they can't get a jumper, they'll attack their loved ones, making David worried. Millie is safe for now because she's on a long flight, so David teleports to his old home and is devastated to find William dead on the floor. Grief doesn't allow David to think straight and he teleports William to the hospital, but there's nothing the doctors can do to save him. Furious, David goes to the police station and threatens Mark until he admits he was the one that told Roland everything about their hometown, including David's feelings for Millie. David realizes he must catch Roland before Millie lands in the US, so he teleports to Griffin's hideout to try to steal his paladin research. Griffin doesn't let him, explaining that unlike the henchman, Roland is too dangerous. This makes David think they should team up to defeat him, but Griffin turns him down, saying he prefers to work alone. Then Griffin teleports to Tokyo and David follows him to keep bothering him about teaming up. Griffin prefers to steal a scar to have some fun, and brings David along, showing him how he can make the car jump along on the road. David never jumped with something this big, and Griffin confesses he once knew a guy that tried to teleport a whole building but died in the process. After David asks for the millionth time, Griffin accepts to team up as long as David doesn't contact him ever again. Afterward, the two of them teleport to the airport, but it's too late, Millie already landed and left. David goes to the bar to ask for her, and a waitress tells him Roland's been around asking for Millie too. Next David teleports to Millie's apartment and is relieved to discover she's fine. Millie doesn't want to see him, but David can hear the paladins approaching so he begins confessing everything, teleporting to grab the snow globe on the shelves to prove it to her. This terrifies Millie and she tries to run away, thus David has no choice but to grab her and take her to Griffin's hideout. This makes Griffin furious because he knows the paladins have a machine that allows them to open wormholes on the scar left by the jumps. In the meantime, Roland and his men arrive at Millie's apartment and do exactly as Griffin feared. While waiting for the wormhole to open, the boys hide, and David discovers that Griffin's research includes his own mother because Mary is a paladin too. At that moment, Roland arrives and captures David with his electrical wires. When he's about to kill him, Griffin cuts in with a flamethrower and begins fighting Roland. To counter Roland's use of technology, Griffin teleports to the city to grab a bus and bring it back, making it fall on Roland. Unfortunately Roland is fine, so Griffin uses the flamethrower again to push him back into the wormhole, then he follows him to continue fighting him at Millie's apartment. Meanwhile Millie cuts the wires to save David and makes him promise he'll leave her alone after taking her home. David accepts but also confesses she's been his only love since they were kids. The sweet moment is interrupted by Griffin, who comes back with a paladin's machine, thinking they won't be followed anymore. However Roland uses the jump scar Griffin left to launch a hook that captures Millie and brings her to the apartment right before the scar closes. David wants to go to save Millie, but Griffin begins preparing a bomb to take it to the apartment and kill all the paladins once and for all, not caring if Millie also dies in the process. Unwilling to lose Millie, David grabs the bomb and drops it at the Colosseum. Griffin immediately follows him and the two of them start fighting over the detonator as they teleport all over the world. Eventually they make it to the top of the Empire State Building, so David throws the detonator away and they have to jump after it. 
a new series of jumps begin, and Griffin teleports a truck to hit David when they make it to a Chechen battlefield. Ignoring the war around them, Griffin retrieves the detonator, but at that moment David jumps on him and pushes him against a pylon with enough current to keep Griffin trapped for a while. Afterward David teleports back to Millie's apartment and finds her tied to the wall. As soon as he tries to rescue her, Roland attacks him with the baton and captures him too. Then Roland gets ready to kill him, but Millie apologizes for misjudging everything, and this gives David the support he needs to take his powers to the next level. Suddenly, the whole room disappears from the building and is teleported to the middle of the Huron River. David is feeling dizzy underwater, so Millie swims to him to ground him, helping him teleport again into the old library. After Millie wakes David up with a slap, David notices Roland is still around. He teleports Millie to a safe spot before jumping on Roland to take him to an isolated cave in the middle of the Grand Canyon. Before leaving, David points out that he's a good person because he could have left Roland with the sharks yet he didn't. Many days later, David follows some clues about his mother to a house in a snowy area. He discovers Mary has a new life with a daughter here, and Mary admits she left him because she knew about his powers. Mary refuses to leave her job as a paladin and hugs him, explaining that she does love David but the only thing she can offer is a head start. David leaves as he accepts his mother as the enemy and meets with Millie, who leaves with him to a warmer place. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.